So this is the 2018 Dacia, Dacia, whatever you call it, duster. And that's it, going click to open the door, just do something there, walk away. Hit a little bop bop, that's it, locking, because it's got remote uh, control from the key fob. It just happens as you walk up, so I don't press that, it just happens. So what's Dacia? Realistically, it's owned by Renault, a French company. Renault do all the development on their cars. They develop all the different parts, the good bits of the car. The stuff they don't use anymore, the stuff that's getting old on Renault, they hand it to a Romanian company called Dacia, and Dacia puts it into cars like this, called the Duster and the Sandero and so on. There is many different versions of this car. In Ireland, we sell basically three of them. This one is called the Prestige. It's the top spec version of it. Uh, you can have it in uh, multiple colors. The orange one's quite nice. It's kind of a slate gray. Around the front, you've got this silver chin strap, which is how you'll know which one is which. That is only on the Prestige. Also, the wing mirrors are in a lovely silver. Uh, largely speaking, very little has happened on the outside of the car to change it from the last one too much. You've got these little vents down the side, and the rear taillights are now kind of square. It's more rounded, less boxy. Let's have a look at the interior and see what's going on in there. Okay, on the inside, let's have a listen. That's a nice tud. It's okay. The tud is not life-altering. It's all right the way it is. But it will take you a couple of seconds to find out where the cheap stuff is. You know, you just start feeling dashboards here and you will find the cheap materials used. That's not necessarily a bad thing because, let's face it, this is not an expensive car. This is not meant to be an expensive car. I have an armrest, which is one of those kind of floaty ones that not, you know, it's not on anything. And I have some storage units down here, a little cup holder in the middle, there's a little, there's a circle here. That circle is supposed to be where the four wheel drive knob goes. And because this isn't four wheel drive, there's nothing there. It's just a hole is what they've left. But it will take like a water bottle. I've had a water bottle there and a water bottle back here. Uh, my sunglasses fit into the sunglasses holder there. Uh, the cheap materials continue across the roof. The steering wheel actually does feel quite substantial. It feels like a bigger uh, car, more luxurious car. So having a look at the interface system in the middle, what kind of annoys is the USB port is above the stereo and you've nowhere to put your phone when you plug it in. So when you do plug it in, you kind of have to throw it in there and then this cable hangs down over the front of everything. It's just a little design feature, but if that was on the bottom, it'd be much easier, right? Anyway, so the interface with this system here, when I take the wire out of the way, uh, is it's okay. Like it's perfectly acceptable. I do have sat nav, it is in there. The system is actually made by LG, uh, the big electronics company, they make that. And so the radio works, the, the interface of the media works, it doesn't have a device at the moment, the phone works. Um, it does give economic information, somewhere in there, about how you're doing. Um, and of course you can go into the settings. But when you're in the nav, you can actually see the graphics card trying to do its thing. And it's a little bit, you know, you drag and you try to get the thing to go where you want it to go. But like it searches for destinations, it's actually pretty acceptable. If you have a car that doesn't have sat nav, you're gonna be okay with this, you're gonna be familiar. It's no Garmin system, but it works, okay? This one has single zone climate control, which is actually done by these three knobs. There's good knobs here. Uh, and has air conditioning, and that's about as far as that goes. Now, there is an eco button here that you can use. This one does actually have parking sensors, and it does have cameras uh, front and rear. So hold on a second, I'm gonna start it up. So you're gonna see the cameras front and rear. So when I go reverse, you'll see the reversing camera come on. Uh, and then when I go forward, you see the forward camera has come on. So this actually has front and rear cameras along with parking sensors. That's not something you get on every car now, lads. Let's be serious. Okay, back seat. It's pretty dark back here, I'll say that. These windows are actually tinted on this model as well to make it a little bit darker even. Um, you can, as I've just shown you, fit three seats there, no problem. I do fit into this back seat with lots of headroom left to spare. There is Plenty of window space for everybody to see out, but it is pretty dark in the back seat. Plus these headrests do a very strange thing. They kind of, they go up and down on their own. See, they, my daughter pointed this out to me that it just goes, 
up and down. It's either down fully or all the way up. There isn't an in-between of the two, so there's no more clicks in that. It just kind of goes up and slithers back down there on its own. Kind of annoying. You can fit that out for yourself. These seats do split. They do roll forward. They do fall forward. Uh, there's no other adjustment on them. It is a 60-40 split. On the entry level one, that might be, check this, one single bench. Depends on the spec in Ireland. I'm not sure whether it's a bench here or not. To the boot! Put the child seat back in now, of course. Go. Right, give it a stick. So the main event of this is the boot space, and there is quite a bit of it. It is actually a fairly sizable boot, and the boot lid is very easy to lift as it pops up like that. And you can actually stand underneath it. I have, do have room, I'm over six foot, so I'm okay with that. Uh, big partial shelves in this as well. You're not gonna fit much on this. It's not very safe or secure. You're not gonna be able to put things down on that because it's absolutely flat going into the car, so anything you put in there will zoom off on its own. But inside the boot, it's actually okay. There are two shopping bag hooks. Uh, there is a light in the boot here as well. Now, there is a couple of factors. So it's, it's big, it does swallow stuff. Um, but this carpet effect thing, it's just carpet. And then underneath that is metal. The metal floor of the actual car is directly underneath. The spare wheel, which is an option, don't forget, Skinny spare wheel is free, full size spare wheel costs money. Neither are available on a 4x4 version. This is a two wheel drive version. So it does have a skinny spare wheel, but it's on the outside of the car underneath. Guess who gets dirty hands when you gotta change your tires? Not a big deal, right? Now I'm not quite sure why this was supplied with it, which is a box of Ad Blue. I don't know why it's in the boot, but it's in the boot. Nonetheless, you have to buy Ad Blue for the uh, 1.5 liter diesel. Commodious boot, it's okay. You can split the seats down. You get a 12 volt socket up here on the top above the parcel shelf. Don't know why it's above the parcel shelf, not in the boot itself. Uh, one drawback is, of course, the parcel shelf itself, which does come out with a bit of leverage. It's very big. What do you do with that when you're not using it? Like, just throw it in the garage? Have you got a garage? Because you have to throw it in the garage. Right, let's have a look at on-the-road performance after I put this back in. It's big, isn't it? God. How does this work? Experienced watering journals defeated by parts of the shelf in the back of a duster. Nope, that isn't right. This is all up this side, now down the other side. Does that go over or under that? Down the way now. I think it, it like specifically. Oh, there we go. Right, we're good. We're good. We're on. We're on. Got it. Took a minute there, but we got it. Then you hook them two on, and voila, you've got your partial shelf back. It's actually okay. Okay, so sitting into the duster is uh, very familiar, obviously, because it's built by Renault. So some of the same stuff is actually in the car as you would get in any other Renault, as it is, right? So it's, that hasn't changed. Uh, the, DCI engine, it's quiet, I can hear it ticking over, it's doing fine. I have automatic climate control in this one, which is um, a single zone, so you turn it on, it just heats the whole car like that. And as an off-road car, it's actually okay. When Dacia launched this car, they launched it in Carton House, and we all drove off-road, and quite heavily off-road in the car as well, and it put up with it admirably. Now, just make sure there's nothing coming here. We'll get on the slope and back onto the road. Now, under pressure, that engine actually sounds fine. I'll be honest with you, it sounds okay. The petrol one does sound hurried. It does sound like it's under pressure. The diesel one doesn't so much until the revs get right up there. 115 horsepower, really? I'll get to 60 in a minute, I'm not there yet. There's 60 now. Uh, so, it's not fast, but it is really economical. And that's really what I like about it, is that I'm getting easily 5.5 liters per 100 kilometers, driving it normal, driving it every day. Funnily enough, 
the fuel gauge has only started moving now that I've got over 200 kilometers on the tank. A bit weird. Steering wise, it's very soft, like it's really light. It doesn't feel like it's properly connected to the wheels, not in a dangerous way, just in a sort of, I can't decide if I'm going straight or turning left or right at any one time. So it's not going to be terribly exciting to drive. The gearbox is that typical sort of French one. It's a little bit vague as to what gear you're, you're actually supposed to be in. The, gear, the six speed box is a little bit vague, I will say. Uh, you know, it's just kind of a throw of a gear and you hope that there's a fifth one there and the sixth one after that. But actually operationally, it's fine. Once you're in sixth and you're cruising like I am right now, this thing will cruise for near as makes no difference a thousand kilometers on one tank of fuel it just won't do it very fast that's yeah have an up to five year warranty on them as well which you know that shows a fair bit of confidence in the brand and it's run through the Renault bank so you can buy these Dacias in a Renault branch in your local town there are plans afoot right now in the market to make Dacia only dealerships there is one on the way there's more on the way behind that so there will be a Dacia Dacia dealerships directly in Ireland should you buy one well you know what if you're in a 10 year old car and you're looking to upgrade to the current model and you want something brand spanking new under a fresh warranty with the PCP and the whole lot behind it and a decent dealer network as Renault are pretty much across the country you could do a lot worse than look at this one for sure it looks well, it actually goes okay. Only just buy the diesel, buy the two wheel drive, buy the diesel, buy the manual. Don't worry about the rest of them, they're okay. This is the actual one that you're looking for, a well mid range one. Uh, you could go to Prestige if you want to. You don't really get a lot more kit moving from the middle to the top one. I'd soon that you're stuck in around the middle branch of the thing. Whether you love the car or not, that depends on how you feel about cars. If you're a driver, then you best avoid this one. If you really want to have a car that you can own, love and drive and zoom about in daily, probably Dacia Duster is not it. I still go back to my other point of if you look at a Renault Kajar today, right now, the entry level Kajar, it's only a couple of grand more than this one, okay? See, so it's not going to be a giant step for you to go from this to Renault, which is generally speaking a nicer car to drive own it's a bit bigger inside as well and it has the more modern engines being a 1.2 liter petrol which will give you a proper engine instead of this kind of older and i know some would say simpler but older engine so what's your takeaway in the parlance phil uh look at the thing to take away from this is it's actually a decent utilitarian type vehicle it is a rugged thing it will easily go off road you can have it in two wheel drive you can have it in four wheel drive you have it in petrol you have it in diesel you can have it whatever way you want to have it should you have it that's up to your budget if you're coming from a 10 year old car or like that a 2004 passat right there and you're stepping into this you will see the difference you will you've got a touch screen you've got good six speed box now you've got things in this that you're not going to get in those older cars but you're going to have to move an older car if you're in anything else modern right now mm, Renault is probably the way to go and if you want something really good Renault Kajar it's right there it's around the same price as this plus maybe four or five grand Look, if you like this kind of review, will you leave a comment and tell me this is the kind of one you prefer, these in-depth, these ones where I press and push on things and do stuff to the car. Uh, but at least hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribers. And you can join us every Sunday for a live chat with me called The Sunday Service, which might soon be its own radio show. We'll talk more about that later. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. And until the next time, I will see you on the far side.